Welcome to The Real Deal, your source for spoiler-free movie reviews. I am Sir Brandon the Conqueror. I'm Connor Wiseau. My name is Borat, very excited. <laughs> this is a Halloween special, correct? It's our Halloween special yes. tonight, and what better way to get into the spirit than to actually critique Halloween? Wait, that movie came out in 1978. Ah but they made a new one that takes place 40 years after the events of the original Halloween. Yes. And that's what we are reviewing today. We're going to talk about the movie as a whole and see how it compares to previous sequels in this franchise. But before we get to that, here's the trailer. So I can kill him. The bus crash. Michael Myers escaped. We were trying to hide him, sir. We found him. I need to protect the bad guys. I think someone watched the first Halloween and was like, you know what this franchise needs? Guns. And then this movie was born. So, gentlemen, what do you guys think about Halloween? I think it's possibly the first great sequel to the original film. And that's saying something about uh, slasher film franchises as a whole. Really? You think, uh, do you think Halloween is like the, uh, the grandfather of slasher films? Well, in a way, it was the first slasher film to bring all the popular cliches and elements together. I mean, there was Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Black Christmas before it, but Halloween, the original, was the first popular one. I see. Nathaniel, what are your thoughts on well, Halloween? Well, Borat did not see the film, but Nathaniel, ooh, yes, okay, so I liked Halloween. I really did. Um, I wasn't expecting anything too huge or anything groundbreaking, but I had a lot of fun, and they definitely, you know, it was a return to form for the franchise for sure. Um, yeah, certainly. Yes. Um, I think this movie was trying to, like, give the franchise a fresh start because of all the pretty much the horrible sequels that spawned mm -hmm. after the original movie came out. Yeah, they just mm -hmm. wiped the slate clean, and this is, you know, yeah. officially canon, this in the first one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, right now, this is the most popular movie on IMDb. So, let's talk about why this might be the case in our official review on the production value of the film. Hi. About to see Halloween tonight. Uh, the wait has been long, but hopefully it will pay off. Uh, hopefully. I'm pretty excited. How about you, Connor? Well, uh, I'm anticipating this film highly. I love the original Halloween. I'm hoping this will be a proper follow up instead of all the trash sequels we've been subjected to for the past uh, <laughs> nearly 40 years. So, All right, well, you know, you we'll see and we'll let you know soon enough. Thank you, gentlemen. So that was our reporters giving our review. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have uh, gotten their reactions, gentlemen, it's time to start our production value. So John Carpenter served as the executive producer of this film, which I think is a good move. Guys, yeah, I thoughts? think I think it was great that they brought him back because mm -hmm. he knows what the franchise should be, mm -hmm. as opposed to like Rob Zombie or something who makes yeah. these terrible remakes, yeah, which I've we, not seen. But are we just gonna like pretend that the Rob Zombie remakes ex don't exist? Well, they're yeah, pretending sure, like sure. they don't. <laughs> so there you yeah, go. Yeah, sure, might as well. So yeah. anyway, so. with John Carpenter, I mean, it could have been a risky move because with the original Halloween two, he could not come up with a satisfactory story spent most of his nights getting drunk working on the script because he knew there wasn't much story to tell but he came on board after reading a script by the filmmakers and instantly knew that there was actually something more to say about the original so I if, think they made the right decision here. I think, oh, yeah. I think if you're gonna keep Halloween going you gotta have John Carpenter involved. Mm -hmm. I mean the man practically gave birth to this movie. And oh, he did yeah. the score again which is great mm -hmm. because like when you when you see Michael Myers and someone bumps in and you hear the mm -hmm. ba -da, da da and then you're dun 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 and it's yeah. just it's perfect. Yeah. That mm -hmm. iconic yeah. score. Oh, it definitely yes. put a smile on my face. It gets sure. stuck in your head. It's, yeah. it's that iconic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in the style of the original like uh, synthesizers like in the original yes, piano. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John Carpenter is, you know, this movie 
you can't just make this movie without him. So it's good that he served as the executive producer. So mm -hmm. his vision and his artistic integrity of the film is still preserved. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about continuity. Mm -hmm. This takes place 40 years after the original Halloween. And what do we see? We see Michael Myers' um, mask all kind of cracked mm -hmm. and looks like it's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. So that is a very fine detail. Yes, and it looks like the original mask. It un does. Unlike so many of the others in the sequels that look cheap in comparison. Details yeah. like that really can make or break the movie. Yeah, because I've seen the mask from the other movies, even though I haven't watched them. Ugh, they're <laughs> not good. They are not good. No, so no. I'm glad that they brought it back to its roots in that sense. So let's talk about uh, the lighting of the film. Most of the film takes place mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and there are very few daytime shots in this film. So how do you think the lighting played out well? Oh, like very well. Yeah. Like uh, it was very haunting, especially in the scene with the bus from the mental institution. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like you only see what you you need to, and it feels very, I don't know, isolated and lonely. Like something could come out and grab you at any time and you yeah. wouldn't know it. That's true. Yeah. Darkness, is, I think, is a very common element that we see in uh, these horror films, especially the Halloween mm. franchise. And I think, think the camera work is probably even better than the original. I mean, of course, you can't top that opening tracking shot in the first right. movie. There was, there was one like, shot. It was really, really good. There was very, one shot in solid. particular where uh, we see Michael Myers, we see the camera follow Michael Myers in just mm -hmm. one continuous take yeah. through many mm -hmm. rooms and many houses throughout the movie. Right. You know, I, I, I love shots that just, you stick with the shot oh, throughout mm -hmm. so many, several minutes following a particular character. It's very uh, interesting work of cinematography on that part. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of really uh, pretty authentic special effects in this movie as well. Yeah. I appreciated that they had uh, practical effects for the mm -hmm. gore. I mean, the original Halloween didn't need gore, but with the gore, they were very subtle about it. I and love. I really prefer practical effects over CGI because you don't, you don't need CGI if it's really if you don't need it. Right. Don't use CGI where it's not necessary. That's all I gotta say. So practical effects all the way. After the break, we're going to talk about the screenplay of Halloween. We'll be right back. I'm Anthony Citrin, and for one view a day, you can help producers at WTOP get the recognition they deserve for their work. For just 30 minutes a day, you can help these students make sure their work does not go unnoticed. Please click the link below and help these students get the recognition they deserve. All it takes is one view a day. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, he's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Welcome back to The Real Deal. This is our Halloween special, and we are critiquing Halloween tonight, the 2018 version, that is. The time has come to give our thoughts and opinions on the screenplay of this film. 
Since this is a part of a popular franchise with an iconic movie villain, it's really hard to write an original script for this picture. But how well do you guys think the script was written? Well, I mean, of course, the original Halloween had a few of its narrative flaws, but uh, even so, I think it was a well-written enough script, a story told well enough with a great director to become a horror classic. With this one, the cliches are a little more obvious, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I think this one still holds up. I like how you brought up cliches, because I notice a lot of typical horror movie cliches throughout this picture. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of turned off by that. Well, yeah, I didn't like some of the writing. A few of the plot points felt very contrived. And they're like, oh, we need to do this so Michael Myers can get here yeah. and that sort of thing. <laughs> and also, but I will say, the comedy in this movie was really great, especially this one little kid was so funny, <laughs> had me dying. I think God, everybody I in the theater was practically. I mean, I, yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed that scene, but I, I felt like it was kind of detached from the rest of the movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess I could see that. But I don't know, for me it worked. It was it was a bit of levity, you know, and I appreciated yeah. that. I didn't yeah. really, I don't know, I felt, I felt the movie would have been fine without that scene. I felt like we could have mm. just cut it completely, because that kid really didn't serve anything to the story. I feel like that was really just for comedic value. Mm -hmm. And if you want this movie to be a horror film, in my opinion, the less comedy, the better. So there were, like, I think nine sequels that spawned from the original movie, and this is the... T the this is the 11th installment in the Halloween franchise. So this movie pretty much ignored all of the sequels. Mm -hmm. So that begs the question, are they, are these sequels non-canon now? And is yeah. this new Halloween well, the should. new canon? Well, mm -hmm. the other sequels should be non-canon. A, a big problem with many of them, except for Halloween 3, which doesn't feature Michael Myers at all. Yeah, what's with that? It was, meant to, it was meant to be an anthology series after 2, but anyway. Anthology series... That. With uh, hmm. with the other sequels, uh, they try to reveal too much about Michael Myers. Yeah. Like with two, they say Laurie Strode was his sister, which calls events into question. With later sequels, they say he's part of a cult, which also doesn't make sense and ruins his uh, threat level. And there was a sequel similar to this called H2O that had Jamie Lee Curtis that was meant to be the final showdown, but of course that was only average. So, yeah, and we, we don't need to talk about the Rob Zombie remakes. Um, let's talk about realism. Um, mm. When I look at a movie, I try to see how realistic it is. And this is one problem I have with the original Halloween movie. My, the way Michael Myers kills his victims seems kind of unrealistic. Like, if you've seen the original Halloween, there's a scene where Michael Myers takes a knife, stabs a victim, and he's, like, hanging from the wall. That's not quite realistic. And we see that again in this newer one. Well, I don't think the character is necessarily supposed to be realistic, and he's just an embodiment of pure evil. Yeah, I see. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, he gets shot, like, how many times in these movies and never dies? So but I many. think it's, you just got to suspend yourself in disbelief in that sense. Yeah, my Which, you know, is fine for me. Yeah, so, so that begs yeah. the question, yeah. is this a fantasy film or whatever? Is this something other than mm -hmm. a horror film? Well, no, this is mainly but, horror, but yeah. a lot of films are fantasy anyway. So, but it's just mm. that Michael Myers is the walking essence of death itself, as described by Dr. Loomis in the original. Mm. Pure evil. I see. All right, let's quickly talk about character development because uh, Laurie is a completely different person yeah. than what we saw in the original Halloween. How do you guys think she uh, played that off? Well, she was great in the movie. Uh, basically, it was Sarah Connor, but, you know, it worked. Sarah so, Connor. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because of the trauma, like her toughening up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but I felt I felt it was well done. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, coming up, we're gonna give our reviews on the performances of this relatively unknown cast. You're watching the real deal. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Is how are you precious okay? Mm. Take out the precious. It's way too cheesy. Okay, yeah. Just go, sure. hey, how are you? Nope. How's your day? Yeah. Oh, don't be cheesy. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, what'd she say? She's still typing. I'm not sure. She never takes this long. Huh. I wouldn't worry about it. Give it a few minutes. Welcome back to The Real Deal Halloween Special. We're critiquing Halloween this evening. I am excited because now we get to talk about Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is our review of the performances of the actors. Let's just go right into it. I love Jamie Lee Curtis in this picture, but what did you guys think about her? Yeah, she was oh. great. Oh yeah, Jamie, the best one in the movie. Jamie best Lee one. Curtis lives and breathes the character of Laurie Strode. Mm -hmm. I mean, she had already played the character three times before, so this should be like a fair game for her, like a second nature, and and she proves that well. Yeah, and she really brings the trauma of the character to the forefront, and mm -hmm. you really understood why she was, you know, the way she was, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was really great. If we're going to talk in terms of this being the, you know, in terms of the sequels being not in canon, this is mm -hmm. technically her second time playing as Laurie Strode, mm -hmm. but she has a lot of experience playing as the character in the uh, the sequels from the 70s and 80s. So she is she has a lot of experience in acting. She was an unknown when the original Halloween mm -hmm. came out, yeah. and mm -hmm. this movie featured a lot of. Uh, uh, actors who are unknown, like right. the daughter played by Judy Greer and the wait, granddaughter. Wait, Judy well, Greer Judy was Greer the mother. Was the mother, the mother yeah. I, what I meant. Yeah. Well, the daughter of well, Laurie is what I meant. Laurie. The daughter yeah. played by Judy Greer and the granddaughter. Yeah, right. I don't think Judy Greer is an unknown actress. She's been in a lot. Well, um, but the other ones, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, like the daughter, but she was really good, I thought. The daughter of Judy Greer's character, I thought she mm -hmm. was really well played. Yeah, the dynamic she shared with Laurie mm -hmm. Strode yeah, and how the mother is the like barrier between the two mm. because of the like hardship she experienced under Lori's uh, parentage. And I thought the relationship between her and her grandmother was one of the most interesting parts of the film. Yeah, mm -hmm. for uh, having a relatively unknown cast, uh, Judy, I mean, Lori Strode had um, a lot of great chemistry with her little family that she had there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was no stranger to slasher movies even with Halloween, like uh, Prom Night, Terror Train were two other credits she shared early in her career. Then she became a big movie star. So now, now with all that additional experience under her belt, uh, it's fair to say she's outdone herself here. Her character development, once again, um, I gotta keep touching on her character development because she, she went all out like country blue collar, gun loving type of character. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. A complete 180 from where she was 40 years ago. Yeah, and I love oh, yeah. like the the way like well I don't want to spoil it, but the way her house is in the movie. That's all I'm gonna say. Is really interesting. I was yeah. set that up. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I mean, there's more aspects to play into the realism mm -hmm. of everything that goes on in, in that house. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. I sometimes I'm critical about because. Uh, sometimes I think about, is that really realistic? Did you really have time to plan all of that? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> 40 years, yes. Yeah. So, you know, realism is a big pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about the man who plays mm, Michael yes. Myers. Or let's the men, that. rather. The like. men, yes. Michael Myers was played by two men, James Jude Courtney and Nick Castle. Mm -hmm. Now, Nick Castle reprised his role from the original Halloween mm -hmm. in this one. 
Mm -hmm. And fun fact, though, that in the original Halloween, when we see Michael Myers unmasked, that was actually played by a different man. It wasn't played by Nick Castle. Yeah, Tony Moran, oh, okay. I think, was his name. Yes. You know, because we've seen Michael Myers unmasked before, I kind of wanted to see his face again. Oh, I didn't. I well, thought that, that would have completely taken it out of the film. I love yeah. what they did. Mm -hmm. In terms of like how they showed him, and mm -hmm. I think it was perfect because you don't you don't want to see his eyes because yeah. he's pure evil, so you don't want to you know identify with him. You I know see what, what you're saying. saying. Yeah. Even if you don't see his eyes, even if we just see like the half of his face, like Wilson from Home Improvement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but uh, Courtney and Castle both uh, played Michael Myers. I think just like Castle played him in the original, like mm -hmm. calculating, uh, mysterious, like he knows exactly. Like, they know exactly how and when to move is the character. Yeah. And it certainly doesn't put a dent on them, on, on Michael Myers uh, killing people in the movie. They certainly know how to play as Michael Myers, but they didn't really add anything new to him. Well, not that he's not they already terrifying. They don't need to add anything new. Exactly. He, just, he just is. I don't know. I think it would have been interesting to see something new but subtle from him. But that's just my opinion. He's still a great character, and I still really enjoyed this movie. We're going to take another break, but when we return, we are going to give our final thoughts and IMDb ratings inside the void. Don't go away. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi there. You might wonder what a famous Hollywood celebrity like me is doing reading in the dark. Is this some new sort of Hollywood method acting? No. This is quite real. Did you know that Americans use about four times as much energy per year as the global average? We waste energy left and right despite the fact that the dirty fossil fuels we use to power our energy sources wreak havoc on the natural world and destroys valuable wildlife habitat. By reading with my solar-powered night vision goggles, I'm saving energy and looking sleek. <laughs> you don't have to sit in the dark like Ed Begley Jr. to save the world. Fight climate change by speaking up for cleaner, smarter energy, including rooftop solar. Oh, that's way better. Oh. Do your part and find out other world-saving tips at betterthaned.org. <laughs> Welcome back to The Real Deal. We're just about to wrap up our reviews on Halloween. I do have one more question I want to ask before we enter the void. Do you think Michael Myers will return? Well, they mm. discussed uh, two back-to-back -back movies before, but they wanted to release this one and make this one first to see how well it would do. So I think it's safe to say it'll return. The movie's doing very well, so I think there might be a Halloween 2. So... Because the ending or three, technically. or three, because the ending is pretty ambiguous. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so the time has come to give our final thoughts and our IMDb rating. So Borat, will yes. you enter the void? Big Jamash, though I've not seen the other Halloween sequels, I think it is safe to say that this is the best of them all. Michael Myers is very terrifying, and Jamie Lee Curtis is great in the role that launched her into stardom. Though there are problems narrative-wise with the horror genre cliches, this Halloween is a worthy to stand aside the 1978 original. I give it a 7 out of 10 stars. Jin Kui.
This new Halloween might be the first great sequel in the franchise. Jamie Lee Curtis lives and breathes Laurie Strode, the cinematography is stunning, and the production value is appropriately small scale. Finally, here is a sequel that doesn't feel the need to make Michael Myers any more than what he is, the walking essence of death itself. It satisfies in being what it is advertised as, Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers for, so it seems, the last time. Eight out of 10. Halloween is probably the best movie this franchise has spawned since the original was released 40 years ago. It's action-packed, suspenseful, and downright horrifying. I think this movie had a few too many horror movie cliches, and I felt that they didn't add anything new to Michael Myers' character, but Jamie Lee Curtis was spectacular, and I think she had great chemistry with her little family. I give Halloween 2018 7 out of 10 stars. Thank you, David Gordon Green, for not totally ruining this movie. So, that's our show. Join us next time for our reviews on Bohemian Rhapsody. So, gentlemen, are you excited for a Bohemian Rhapsody? Well, I'm, I am, but uh, there have been mixed reviews from the UK, so I'm starting to worry a little. Mixed reviews. That's actually pretty surprising, considering all the hype that uh, this Queen movie is getting. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the actor uh, Remy Malek, he uh, s stole my part. Uh, I very envy of him, yes. Envy, you say? Yes, very envy. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, I think we're going to have a spectacular episode when we critique it in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it won't disappoint me, but because you heard mixed reviews from some source, that um, kind of scares me a little. Because mm -hmm. I really want this movie to be great. Queen is very popular, and this is going to be a great legacy to Freddie Mercury. So mm -hmm. I hope it turns out great. Mm -hmm. But that's our show. Make sure you follow the show on Twitter at The Real Deal WTOP. Thank you so much for watching, and have a safe and happy yes. Halloween. Watch my movie film. Rise and shine at nine. I'm James Gattato here with your next A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. If you think trains will stop if they see a car on the tracks, you're right. They will. About a mile after they hit you. Trains can't.